Come with Cindy and me today. We're going to explore this vineyard slash wedding venue together. And then we're actually going to have a little wine tasting with Tom at the end. Please be patient. There's a lot to show. This place is 100 acres. It's got two houses and 18 plus acres of what used to be a vineyard. You don't have to use it as a vineyard. You can just grow hay or cattle or mow the grass. Or I think it would make a knockdown wedding slash event venue, which you wouldn't even need permission for. You could have it right now. You could start making money this year with this property. I don't know anything about growing grapes. I know a little bit about making wine. I'm pretty good at that. And I am an expert at drinking at a wine. Regardless, Cindy and I, we just want you to enjoy life. Come with us today. I realize some folks are vineyard experts and they're gonna call the vineyard police and have me hauled off. Please don't do that. I'm just gonna share with you the little bit that I know. There's so much packed into this video. We're gonna see the house, we're gonna see the winery, you're gonna see the drive up. I'm gonna show you all the land, even soil maps, and we have aerials too. So please like and subscribe to help our algorithm so we can make more videos. I really love you guys. Hold on, grab you some popcorn. We're gonna have some fun. I think what we need to do is we need to shoot the house first. What do you think? The stone is just fantastic. I mean, it's stone all the way to the top. Now there's another apartment here. Um, I'll show that to you inside, but it's a bedroom, a bath, like a little seating area and the wine cellar is in here. And then there's a, like a two car garage here, which goes in the back. I think, does that door open up and go in there too? And that's like another whole apartment in there. There's actually a place for a kitchen. It's all like plumbed out mm -hmm. for a kitchen and a range, a sink, and it's got a walk-in cooler. So I was, but like I'll show that to you. Is that dry stack stone? It's, it's a dry it's stack. The, there's mortars back here, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's dry stack. But it, I think they call it blind dry stack or whatever. The guys did an amazing job, whoever did it. Okay. Yeah. And this is just scrap that they got off of the land which just tickles me to death here's some more project piles here this is when they built the house i mean mm -hmm. it's like right here and this is where their project pile was for sure i think tom's here yeah there he is <laughs> hey how you doing Good to see you too. You bet. Hi. This is my wife, Cindy. Nice Cindy. to meet you. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. I'm Bill. Hi, Bill. I'm Cindy. I'm nice Bob. to meet you. His, his <laughs> counterpart. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And then there's Tom. Because <laughs> I can certainly remember when we didn't have any of that stuff and it wasn't that long ago. So oh, if I yeah. look the same distance ahead, what in the world are we going to be able to do? Yeah, I know. Someone, maybe not me. I like, won't be there. Like a little chip under your skin or something. <laughs> something to help the memory and we can say goodbye to Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, now no, that no. would be something. That would be something. Yeah. Why don't you invent that, Tom? I'll try my best. Well, you, you got the idea. Some, uh, fly with it. Now. Yeah. I mean, uh, you go down to the end of the ridge mm -hmm. and look over, then there's a bar about to fall down there. But the creek, the creek comes in over here and it goes around the bottom here. And then the bottom, on the bottom, on the other side of that ridge, comes back out there. It's a horseshoe. Therefore, it's horseshoe bend. That's where, uh, name, that's where name came from. Man. I can map it, but do you know how much river frontage you have that goes around? Uh, no, I have no idea okay. how much it's I bet it's close to a mile. It's Glen's Creek, yeah. And there's also a creek on, a, on the other side, on the other ridge as well, the bottom of the other ridge. That's not as long. But they do come together down before it goes into Salt River. There's Ann. Get on that bridge and start. Well, thank you. Thank you. And this is my wife, Cindy. Okay. Hi, Cindy. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Good, good. Beautiful day. It's perfect. Perfect. And we're in the middle of packing. I didn't realize you needed to do inside the house. Yep, we're going to go in. We're going to just fly in. Yep. Okay, you have to do a lot of editing. No problem. <laughs> no problem. I'll Seven put my finger up. See that box? There's no the, box. <laughs> there's boxes everywhere. I'll tell all our subscribers that Anne made me cover the boxes. Or we can move them while you do that room no. and then put them back. Or no, 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 no. I'll just fly through it. It's no problem. Okay. Yep.
And that's left open for you, so that's Fabulous. already. Thank you. This is viburnum. Yes. Yeah. Boy, that's that's some of the biggest viburnum I think I've ever seen. I guess they're 50, 15, 16 years old. Beautiful. We didn't keep them trimmed probably short enough. Hold on. Well, Cindy's the one with the green thumb in our family, so <laughs> I know the names of some of them, but she keeps them alive. I call Chipper so we can get a picture of Chipper. Yeah, Chipper's down there someplace. What is that, a doggy or? Uh, no, it's a chipmunk. A chipmunk. Okay. Last I saw he went right over there. <laughs> Chipper the chipmunk. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's, let's go on in. Cindy, what do you think? All right. We're going to just have at it if you all don't mind. It's open. Okay, great. Thanks. So I love the stonework, and I love that it's got a tin roof. Perfect combination. I love stone as well. I think the coolest part of it is the story, right? It's always about the story of them trying to clear the fields, and mm -hmm. they didn't know what to do with it, so they built the house. <laughs> no, this yeah. is love. Oh, there it is. Now, Tom, not all of these, but some of these windows or most of these windows are replaced. Is that correct? Yeah, they're Marvin windows. Marvin. The old ones are Marvin. The new ones are Marvin. Marvin's pretty high level. Top of the line. Yeah, that's pretty high up there. You know, you got like Anderson, Pella, and then Marvin is above that maybe. I don't know. If I'm wrong, Mr. Anderson or Mr. Pella or Mr. Marvin, you're welcome to sponsor our channel. No, but seriously, they're new. And then the bronze color goes to the house. The dark bronze, yes, I love that. You see the still photographs on the website or, you know, I'll put some here or whatever. But, of course, they're moving now, so I told Ann that I would block out, crop the, out the boxes. Crop out the boxes. Oh, one of my favorite spaces is this pantry. Check this out. We need the pantry. It's the same floor as the kitchen. Yeah, oh, my God. How cool. It's hard to run it up and down the stairs. <laughs> These cabinets were actually handmade. These are real cabinets by a real cabinet maker. A, a girl, a female cabinet maker who literally lives next door. Yeah. Again, and <laughs> doors closed. <laughs> doors closed. Again, that's like cool story. That's very cool. Yeah, and I've heard of cabinet makers, but I've never heard of female cabinet makers. Oh, doors closed. Doors closed. <laughs> this is my favorite room. Yeah, this is great. I love the and you can't come in here. I'm, I'm, take, I'm taping. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, you're fine. It actually looks fine. It looks great. Place looks great. You were so nice. You actually were backing out. <laughs> I was messing with you. How many of the windows have been replaced? About half or? No, all in that new part, all were replaced by Marvin. They replaced them. And here, in this, and downstairs, one still needs to be replaced. And we replaced maybe 10 or less than 10. But I don't remember if it's six or eight. More than five and less than ten. That's what I okay. Remember. Did you get all that? Okay. Now they replaced them out of warranty. I mean, out of, out of a warranty issue. Or? Yeah. Yeah. They started. They got. It looked like mold or mildew on the inside, so I called Marvin and he said that it was a mold on the outside. But what happened was the vinyl clad popped on the outside and water got in them, so they just replaced every window in the house. Wow, that's and fantastic. Now that's a good warranty. Yeah. Uh, that part is 2001. This part is 1997. I don't even remember when they replaced them. Maybe it was 2010 or 11. Okay. Something like that. But Marvin windows aren't cheap, so. Mm hmm Right, yeah, it's top-of-the-line stuff. And I guess we got the Marvin windows because I fell in love with the front door at one of those home things. Oh, yeah. Home show. Are you going to take them? Yeah, we're good. I'll edit it. I'll edit it. Anything that you say that's really bad, then I'll just take it out. But you didn't say anything bad. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite room. 
gas fireplace, yeah. See it from the diamond air mantle over there. And the lady who did the the uh, cabinets, she just lives right here, right? Yeah, she, well, she was the general contractor, too. She was the general contractor for the whole house. Yes, and the winery. Wow. And did all the interior work. Wow. Okay. Very but cool. The stone was done by a fifth generation Irish stonemason out of Boyle County. Out of? Boyle County. Boyle County. Huh. Fifth generation Irish stonemason. Do you know who it was? Wayne Carmichael. I learned something new. We lived there and I had no idea there was such a thing. That's awesome. Yeah, he brought his stone splitter out here and his crew brought up the stone from the field because it's all from, all the sun's from here. And so he split it and put it we when we ripped, we had all the limestone they just pop up. So there's piles of stone still out there because there was more stone than we could use for the house. But so there's probably enough for another house. I would say. Very cool. Okay. This is uh, a guest room, believe it or not. It's got a, is it a bay window or a bow window. I'm not sure hmm. what, what the difference is. It's got a good closet. And then it's got its own bath. So it's almost like the Junior Master. I would definitely call it a Junior Master. And the toilet seat's up. <laughs> That'll be in the blooper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like, you know, this is like the hot tub room. Fish tank in the wall. Fish tank in the wall, yep. You're absolutely right. This is even on the inside. It's just pretty amazing. This is it a closet? Mm hmm And then just access to the fish tank. tank. Mm hmm Now, Tom, that, that door there, that goes downstairs to that other... To the a, unfinished side of the basement. Unfinished, like apartment, because it's all set up. Yep. Like it's plumbed and wired and things Shower like ready, that. Toilet ready. Shower ready and toilet ready. And, and the kitchen, too. And kitchen right? ready. Yep. Yeah, kitchen ready. There's gas that runs into that. Down to that apartment. Down that for gas cooktop. Now, the, the other apartment downstairs by the wine room, yes. that doesn't have a kitchen, right? Correct. Okay. But there's a washer dryer hook up here and in the master and downstairs in the garage right up in the closet right outside of that. So three washer dryer hookups. Three washer dryer hookups. So what was the what was the thought process of building with like three kind of uh, apartments? Wow. Well, Family or it's I guess that's what my husband was thinking of. He was thinking that we could turn this into an apartment with the wash, and so that's why it's got a washer dryer hookup. But also, I if I didn't like the washer dryer hookup in the master bath, then we could have put it down here. We started out with the washer dryer over there because that was the first part of the house that we had. So we had a washer dryer over there. Makes perfect and sense. And so it just, it did to us. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> coat closet. Yeah, coat closet. Everybody wants to see inside closets and stuff. So We'll give it to them. I mean, everything closes perfect and they did an amazing job all the millwork. Where did the old part start stop? It was the wall right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was the old part of the house. Originally, it was a big rectangle. Okay. And this was a garage, and so this was on the wall was there. Mm -hmm. And originally we thought it would be a winery. 
and so we left the garage two floors. There was no floor. And then when we decided, now we wanted a house. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we did the floor and did that and exploded. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you did because it's yeah, a heck it's, of a house. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Believe it or not, that is definitely a 60s thing. I've got one of those. The bank thing? A metal piggy bank, yeah. It comes in, it comes apart. This is a ginormous closet. And yes, ginormous is a word. I just made it up. Yeah. But look at this, isn't oh, this? That's like, great. Yeah, awesome. The mirror divides it in. He gets that. There you go. <laughs> I wish perfect. I got half of our closet. But it doesn't work out that way. But maybe he's not working out that many doesn't. All right. Throw it down. <laughs> this is the master bath, obviously. The master master, not the junior master. And the washer dryer right here. The best place for it. It's where all your clothes are generated. Right here in the bathroom and the bedroom. Did you see the master bath? No, I didn't. Okay, check Did it out. Did you see the view? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Wake up. Yeah, sun, sunrise. Uh -huh. oh, oh, is this the east? Uh, the sun streams in? Yes. <sighs> now, in the winter, it's more southeast, but it comes around to here. So in the summertime. All right. Now, we got to go downstairs. All right. Let's do this. Okay, we got one one bath. Now this is the garage. Like you know, we were looking at that on the outside. Full bath here. <laughs> Check this out. Nice. Is that just spectacular or what? And it's cool, cool, mm -hmm. cool. All poured walls. Just like that. That's some old timey stuff. They have steins. And here's this other bedroom, which is really big. I mean, it's almost like a, I don't want to say it's a studio, but it's, it's not tiny, right? Closet, and then of course, full walkout. Oh, you know how I love a walkout basement. Let's go in the garage, and then we'll look in the other apartment, the unfinished. There you go. Another washer dryer set up there. Dryer, washer. Yeah. And another closet here in the back. Now, how do we get into the other apartment? You gotta go down that other set of stairs. You can't get out in there at all from here. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't even fold my towels like I would have. And you should be terribly embarrassed. How humiliating. How humiliating that your towels are unfolded. I am personally offended. You get offended easily. <laughs> you don't have to worry about a thing. The place looks great. It does. I know it's a Look at that stone there, the, the wing wall, Cindy. Right. There's the other apartment, the garage door for that. Is there a walk door there too? Oh, by the way, no, by the way, that bathtub is a whirlpool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, I could. I might have to. Is it full? Full as in battery. Well, that's going to be better than this one because this one is going to be completely empty, and I, I'm not even able to get. It's so dark down here. All right, I don't know if you can see this or not, but here's the the um, here's the garage door. We saw that from the outside. There's the electric panel, 10 inch, 10 inch uh, or nine inch poured walls. Here is the slop sink and toilet. You can't see anything, it's so dark. Anyway, this is toilet and a shower set up here. And then this is where the kitchen is. There's the gas for the range. There's a sink, uh, and there's, you know, for electric range too, I think. So, Fred, and pump some iron. Pump some iron. What do I look like? <laughs> um, and then this is a refrigerated room. So this is FRP, and all, all insulation up here, and, you know, what do they call that? Cool bot or whatever, that little... Thing you put in a regular window air unit and it just runs like a refrigerator. And this is all poured. All right, let's go up to the winery. So that was this house. And then we're going to go. Oh, and they got the deck up there too. I didn't get a shot of that deck. Say hi, Bob. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And so what's this building here? This is the uh, tasting room. This house was supposed to be the tasting room, mm -hmm. but they'd rather have a house, which right. I think was a good call. Uh, this is the tasting room. And then the winery is actually in the basement. And the bottling fill line fermentation tanks and all that stuff um, how long um how long have we been doing wine making wine maybe uh it's got to be at least 15 years we need a bottling line <laughs> yeah, we do <laughs> we do we're doing multi multiple batches mm -hmm. we need a bottling line we do need a bottling line I asked if they would sell it down there, and they're like, well, maybe somebody's going to want it. Uh -huh. So they, they weren't real excited about selling it selling to me it. for a, a deep discount <laughs> just at first. I guess if, if you didn't want to do all the actual grapevines and the whole farming, you could certainly do those wine kits with a, has a small farm winery license and just go from there. Absolutely. There's a guy we used to buy our kits from in Florida, remember? Tim, I think his name. Mm -hmm. And great guy. And I said, what do you do? He said, well, I've got three things. I've got, I sell wine kits and supplies. And then we sell wine and make wine. I said, just out of the kits. Yeah. He says, it's because it's only about $4 a bottle to make it. Mm -hmm. And then he has an event center. I said, okay, which one mm -hmm. of those three horses makes the most amount of money? He said, you know, really? It's about all the same. Like you said, you, you could just do, you could buy grape juice, balanced juice already. There's mm -hmm. a place in New York State that, that sells, and you can get any kind of juice. You could put up a couple of what they call stub vines. Mm -hmm. So the stub vines are, you know, you just put some vines here, maybe a gazebo or something, whatever. You got to make it so that you could rent that space out as mm -hmm. well and then do events. So, of course, if they're going to have the event here, you have to, they have to buy your wine. Mm -hmm. and sure. right so but that way you're not like farming because with farming is droughts and bugs and Birds all and chemicals and, and frost mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah exactly well this is beautiful here just for coming out here and oh, yeah. offering dinners or appetizers with wine tasting and because the views are amazing and even if you wanted to run some vines down there for looks if you didn't want to actually farm them then it's no no big deal and then you can see them from here with that you could do the stub vines and a little like gazebo like it is an example over there and then you could 
if you were booked here, you could rent that out mm-hmm. as well. So now you got two sure. or three different yeah. venues. Different you could have three weddings going on at the same time or whatever. You could do just tables in the field that like farm to table idea. That would be, that. yeah. Like then charcuterie. Like overlooking stub vines or whatever you want, or even just the beautiful part here and just to be outside. Tastings, mm-hmm. charcuterie. Yeah. Pairings, right? Whatever. I mean, you kind of, you kind of, okay. yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> you kind of have a lot of options. Now, I don't know how this was set up as a tasting room, but it's, it, it's great for a, you know, a oh, honeymoon yeah, suite or people. something. You can have a table over there. You can have a long table here. Mm-hmm. Now this is yeah, a full bath with a beautiful walk-in shower. I mean, that's a full size. That's not an abbreviated version. That's a full five foot. Beautiful real marble on the floor. It's a travertine marble, I'm almost positive. What are you doing? <laughs> and then this is the public. Yeah, this is probably North American travertine. Filled. So you don't have cleaning issues. Beautiful. Looks like we've got a field to pork dinner years ago. There you go. And you can tell this is a commercial kitchen. It's got the the the, the mop sink, mm-hmm. and then it's got the three compartment. This is very cool with two faucets. Now you can bathe all the kids at once, and the dog. And this is quartz, I believe. I'm not a stone expert, but I see some stuff and I ask, "What is that?" <laughs> right. That's how you learn. And again, this is all, all handmade cabinetry. All right. Now, kind of like what I've been waiting for. I want to show you the winery. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. it. Yeah. Is this open, Tom? Yes, sir. Tom, you're very. I fun. love it. I love it when he calls me, sir. I'm so <laughs> Well, we're actually going to show. We're actually going to show can. how the wine is being is how to consume wine. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I have a degree in that. Okay. Yeah, you, so yeah, I'm good at that as well. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll talk your head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I fall in love with everybody. I just want to listen to Frank Sinatra, Michael Bublé, please. Here's the power, right? You're going to want to know all about the power. And this is uh, this 200 amp. And this is 200 amps. So we got some wine down there. I'll tell you, Tom, everything has gone crazy, as you know, with uh, building and all that stuff. Absolutely. We just did uh, service to our shop. We just did service to our shop, which is basically just an underground wire and a, and a meter. And then we just wanted the approval. So we just, we did a a big panel like this, but with just one 220, I'm sorry, one 110 plug and then the lights. It was over $4,000. And it was mostly materials, right? And and we saved because Josh was able to do the lighting. Mm -hmm. So, but, Mm -hmm. but with all that, it's like crazy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so just just that panel with nothing, <laughs> not even a 220 thing, it was four grand. So you can see there's there's two panels here, and, you know, I don't have to go on about that. Gosh, I love these things. Um, so all this stuff is negotiable, Tom? Yes, sir. There's a, we'll have a price list attached to the list. Okay. Ah. Ah, the Portuguese floor corker. 
Yes, ma'am. You know how to do that one. <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> well, that's that's why we need a bottling line. Well, that's why we need a bottling line. <laughs> we have plenty of friends that come because they know what happens after you bottle the wine. You get to drink the wine. And this, I'm sure, is all, I, I mean, 100% guaranteed. This is all state approved and to all the specs. And that's why there's ADA handles and yeah, stuff like that there. There's rough cut for a shower. You just can't see it. Okay. There's a shower here? Yeah, it's rough cut okay. concrete. <clears throat> there you go. So a shower can be installed. Okay. There you go. Just pop that out. Now this is cool. Here's another one of those spaces, right? And this is water furnace. I did not realize this is all geothermal. Yep. Oh, yeah. I wonder what the utilities are. Well, it's got to be super, I mean, geothermal. It should be nothing. Right. She told me that she can keep it cooler than 55 degrees down here in the summertime for less than 150 bucks a month. Jeez. Yeah. This is where the, the wells are on the outside. So they just run that fluid through the furnace, right? So it's just a loop. They run the fluid down. And then down in the ground, whatever, 150 feet. And so it's always 58 degrees there. That way you're not heating the air from, let's say it's 20 outside to 70 inside. You're only heating it from 58 to 70. And cooling, well, that's a snap. Bragging on your water furnace, out, uh, Anne. That was a smart thing to do. Well, the geothermal. It kept us from having to buy a commercial chiller down here it will keep this basement at 55 degrees when it's 100 outside gosh and the electricity bill is still only about 150 175 dollars a month that's awesome it's amazing. that's awesome the other would have cost the commercial chiller would have cost a lot more money to run to run and to buy probably you had to have an have hvac to system buying, but yeah. Running for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you 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 do the chiller what for cl clearing the wine? Well, you want to d keep all your wine at a cool temperature all the time. So normally we keep it at sixty down here, and that's why so much of it's underground. Mm -hmm. It's easier that way. Well, it's easier it that it. way, and you've got the earth insulation. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go out this way. I want to show you. Okay. Now this is going to cost me money. Oh, by the way, this is all. Is this all ten inch? No, that's that's eight inch. There was some nine or ten inch over there. I swear there was. This is gonna cost me money because Cindy is gonna see this filler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how much? <laughs> how much for this filler? And you just put the bottles on there, it hangs right here. How much faster we could get it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we gotta get one for sure. So these are all pump hoses, pumping the wine out. So what's Racking it. That's a crusher. And a crusher yeah, crusher, destemmer, and a press. Uh -huh. Remember we saw this stuff in Italy. Remember that? If you can remember back that long ago. Uh, a lot of wine under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Everything's negotiable. Right? Yes. Everything's negotiable. Even my husband. <laughs> do I? Maybe we could do a two for one deal with somebody. You, you, you heard it right here. You heard it. You heard it. <laughs> we won't tell Bob. Okay, I'm going to stay. I'm going to lock up and go upstairs. All right, okay. sounds great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they didn't do anything schlocky here. Now, this is all set up. See all these rods sticking up here, Cindy? Yes. That was the threaded rod. You put your sill plate on there, mm -hmm. bolt it down, and you take off. Mm -hmm. So this is you're, you're all set up for another building here. 
my gosh, look at this. Now those are totes. Yeah, a lot of poured concrete. That has gone up too, my goodness. You know, you really can't go to a winery without drinking a little wine, right? So this is what we make here. Cindy and I actually make this with the boys. You probably heard us talk about it. This is actually my grandmother right there and her friend and her sister, my aunt. I put our family pictures on, on our bottles, which is kind of fun. This is my mom and her spaniel. I can't remember. It was a cocker spaniel, I guess. At a pheasant hunt, probably in the mid-50s, early 50s. And so we kind of do that sort of thing. Now there's, when you make wine for yourself, they, there's legalities and I don't know what they are, um, but you can only do so many cases. Come on, guys, sit down. Well, Let's have a little wine. Invite us. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a good, clean glass. These are, these are my favorite glass. Fairly clean. I like these too. A little, I don't like the, a little wide right. on the bottom. Let's put on there. Don't go there. I love those glasses. They're mm. great. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. So you want to pop it? Or you want to hold it and I'll pop it or what? Here we go. This wine is probably... Uh, we, is this we, one we're doing first? Yeah, we probably bottled it. It says 2021, so we probably bottled it in January. So it's only about five months in the bottle, which is not enough. Seven to eight is really good. And then two or three years is even better, but we rarely have leftover wine. My favorite sound. <laughs> well, they come in these convenient single serving bottles. <laughs> Tom, you wanna, you wanna pour? Yeah, just tell me when. We like to go up to the, to the equator, we usually say. Now, of course, we didn't bring our venturi. No, we did not. Is this how you no pour? air reading. You can glug it in. You, the more air, the, the better. The more air, the better. Yeah. Wine has a lot of volatiles. So that's why you pour beer, for sure. So when we go back to eating at restaurants and whatnot, we're not going to understand what a normal serving is those five ounce servings of wine oh yeah five ounces like, is probably way on down there it's terrible what? we have a uh, venturi in fact if you want to get a venturi like we have in fact we have like three of them uh one in at the bar one in the kitchen one upstairs in the bar there's a link in the description below to get uh, a venturi for yourself they're fantastic you got to get them we get a few of them at a time and then give them away as gifts to friends Here's to wineries. Here's to wineries. May we always make wine together. And, and Horseshoe Bend. And Horseshoe Bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Tastes oh, yeah. young. It does taste young. It needs a couple more months. It is young, but it's coming on really good. Mm -hmm. No, it's good flavor. If you all have an interest in wine, I learned everything I know about wine from Tim Vandergrift. And he's a really cool guy. I talk to him every now and then. He's a fantastic guy. He's got a channel. I'll put a link to his channel right here. Tim's a cool dude. Yeah, the kits are, the kits are fun to make. Well, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, if you have any interest in this, it's about, we always say it's about an hour and a half to make a, a kit. So that's 30 bottles. But it's not an hour and a half all at once. Mm -hmm. It's about five or 10 minutes to get everything rolling, put the juice in, add the oak chips and put the yeast. And, and then, then it becomes wine. As soon as the yeast hits it, it legally becomes wine. Uh, before that, it's just grape juice, right? That makes sense. That's about 10 minutes. Then in about a week or so, you rack it over to another container, leave some of the sediment or all the sediment. That's another 10, 15 minutes. Then two or three weeks after that, mm -hmm. you have to do something else. And then the bottling is really what takes the longest time, which is about half an hour or so. So it's like 20, 20, 20, and then a half hour. Mm -hmm. But it's over eight weeks, so it's really not that big a deal. We sometimes make, you know, four, six, 10 at a time. Now 10 gets squirrely, six gets squirrely because now you got a bottle, you got a bottle 180 bottles, or 10, you got a bo bottle, 300 bottles so you have to have friends over anything over two 
determines that it becomes a bottling party. Explain the bottling party. Really, it's, you need six people in the bottling room. And then you line everybody up and everybody has a job. And somebody's getting the bottles ready. Somebody's filling the bottles. Somebody's corking the bottles. Like the corker we saw in the bottling room, that red one. That's what we have. And then, uh, and then you've got to shrink wrap it. Then somebody's putting the labels on. And then somebody's putting it in the wine rack. And if you don't have a wine rack, you can just store them in boxes. Mm -hmm. We use these synthetic corks. Uh, I know, don't give me any lip. You can use natural corks, but they do dry out. The synthetic corks don't. And you can leave the wine standing upright. With the natural corks, you want to lay the wine down. After you bottle it, about three days later, you can lay it down. And then uh, and it keeps the cork wet. You gotta keep your cork wet. Because happiness is a wet cork. Reminds me of a Saturday Night Live skit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so we use a synthetic cork so I can stand them up, but you can actually fit more laying down than you can standing up. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Next uh, bottling party, I'll, uh, I'll cork your bottles, Brad. Uh, Chief bottle corker. Uh, Captain Cork. <laughs> I, feel like I, I don't know what to say. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain Cork and the Prince of Pork. <laughs> oh, there you go. This conversation's making me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> don't you lie to them. <laughs> what? So don't you lie to them. <laughs> you know, the good thing about wine is that everybody's happy. Right. So that, mm -hmm. that would be a real big push. Like if we were younger, of course, why not retire into something like this? Mm -hmm. But everybody's happy. Um, have you ever seen a woman not light up when you say, you want a glass of wine? What flavor do you like? What color do you want? You know, a lot of people like sweet stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like sweet. we don't typically make sweet wines. But we can, and I've got a bunch. I've got about what about six or eight so kits. That sangria. There's stuff. there's like blood orange sangria. There's green apple riesling. Any of those? No, I haven't. Um, my mouth is watering just saying that green apple riesling because it's got that, you know, that crisp bite like mm -hmm. a green apple, which I don't really like green apples, but I love the green apple riesling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, nobody was taking my picture, so I figured. Huh. I'll just take it myself. There is nothing wrong with this. We sit around, I don't want to say most nights. Cindy? Yes, most nights. <laughs> most nights, you know, when, when you make your own wine, you've got, you got to taste it. Otherwise, you, know, you don't know when it's ready. The problem is not making enough. First batch we ever made was gone in a month. 30 bottles. I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't good. Because it didn't get to age. So then we had to make more. <laughs> so if you're going to actually make wine, you need to make like literally five, 600 bottles at a time. Just like bang it out. Just do it. Whatever it is. That's two batches every two weeks or whatever. Stagger it. Just, mm -hmm. you, But you can't. If you're going to wait eight weeks for 30 bottles, you're going to be drinking it faster than that. You have to and knock it And you give it away out. as gifts and things like that. Because everybody's going to want your homemade wine. So, mm -hmm. more air you entrain into it, the better it's going to taste. Like the volatiles go away. And by the way, it's not rude to suck on that like that. Make the gurgling sound. Swirl, sip, suck, swallow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first class, I swear to God. I swear to you, it's our first class. <laughs> anyway, if this property is right for you, call Tom. That's Tom. Call him right there on his phone. Go like this, Tom. And that's his number right there. <laughs> and if this property isn't right for you, get on our home finder. Tell us what your ideal property looks like. We only ask like five questions. How much do you want to spend? How soon do you want to buy? How much land do you want? And then a place for you to just write as much as you want. You know, I want it to have a barn or I want it to have a creek or whatever that sort of thing is. Or I have animals, so I'd like to have it fenced. We get some really great requests, and then we'll send properties that meet your criteria. And of course, like and subscribe, because you don't want to miss another fun video. Ciao. Bye. Hey, love y'all.
thank you for hanging out with us this afternoon. And thank these two cats. Thank you, Cindy, for obliging me. She says, do I, like, what am I going to do? I said, you're going to, we're going to do this together. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun when you like your wife. 30, how many years? 32? One? Gosh, that's older than I am. No. 30s what? i was i was 20 i was 21 you, you were 20 i was, I was 20. 21, you were 21 and i'm 57 now so father's day will be 36 years oh my father's day 36 oh, years yeah, i've been married know. so damn long i don't even look before i cross the road <laughs> we come off the main road and now we're on this little road it gets narrower and narrower as it goes in you're not that far in now. You're only five miles from the Bluegrass Parkway. Look at there. Yeah, look at this. Why, it's Buffalo, I say. Hello, Mr. Buffalo. What was his name? Buff. Bill. Well, that was quite the little distraction, wasn't it? <laughs> I was mid-sentence, and there's like a dozen buffalo on the side of the road. This place, it's a winery. It's underutilized, like, by a ton. Sin, you need to clean my windshield. You are the woman. Uh-huh. The woman I'll get right on that. cleans. The men hunt. Now, you know the story with these folks, right? They, uh, their dream was to have a winery. They did a great thing. They did a bed and breakfast, tastings, the whole thing. And, you know, they just got older. Wow. Dogs. People. <laughs> you just visit right along. So they're just getting older, right? So it's time. It's time to move on. Another interesting thing is and you'll see it later in the video. I've known a lot of cabinet makers in my life, but I've never met a female cabinet maker. A female cabinet maker made all the cabinets for the house and did all the woodwork. So we're talking to the lady and she says, well, actually she's the general contractor too. And she lives next door. So I just thought that was- That's a very cool story. That's a cool story. I think she lives like right here. Um, we're gonna turn left, but I think she lives like down here, I think. And I don't know why I think that. Maybe I got the wrong turn. This reminds me of that solar house that we shot in Berea, where it, the road just kept getting narrower and narrower, and there were only a few people on that road. They were all friends, of course. When you live on a like a private road that only has like six houses on it, you get to be buddies. I think this is the, the place here. This is the place, I think. Why well, I believe that's her. Contractor. That's a beautiful place too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This place has got about a mile of frontage on Glens Creek, which is a river for all intents and purposes. It's probably 40 to 60 feet wide, most places. And this is where the property starts right here. Here's the corner post. A lot of people like to see the corner post. It's the corner post. It goes down to the creek. And I'll put in here how far it goes down. Because you, you know, I can get the elevation here and then the elevation here.
but the internet is wicked fast. I'll put a, a screenshot here. I'll go to uh, speed test and put a screenshot. It's like 100 now. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that's, 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 that's what we have enough fiber at our office. It's mm -hmm. just as fast, just so you know. No one's here, so let's just go our, do our business. We're gonna go down to the river, and there's a, a couple ponds. In fact, there's four ponds on the property. There's a couple ponds, and then there's a, a barn down here. I just love the birds' sounds. Mm -hmm. The morning you get the mornings you get the best. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. You're not very talkative today. I haven't had enough coffee. Be honest. We were doing some research for this property last night. We're doing some wine research. I think I actually had margaritas last night. <laughs> I don't think I was anywhere near the grape zone. <laughs> if God didn't want us to drink wine, he wouldn't have made us grapes. I'm just saying. And all those people out there who eat grape jelly, thank you for keeping the industry alive. There's still vines here, but they're not, they're not coming along at all. Well, that's a good thing about it. You can do whatever you want with this property. And there's a barn down there. See down there? We're gonna go down there. So I'm gonna take you right there. But that's the greatest thing about this property. You don't have to worry about the vines and farming and all that stuff. Because that's a pain in the neck sometimes, a lot of work. Can you imagine? I don't know how many vines there are here, but, or how many vines there were. But those posts and wires, they can come out easy or they are all set. All you have to do is plant these little, just plant the little, uh, little shoots. If you buy them, they're like whatever, 12 inches long. Shove them in the ground. And... So are these all um, good vines? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know some enough about them. Because some are leafing like this, but not right. all of them. But not heavy. Now you see the rocks here? This is what they uncovered when they started ripping and stripping the, the fields to put the grapes in. I guess you have to plow troughs or something. Anyway, I don't know exactly what it is. I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because that's exactly right. I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's what all these rocks are. That's how they built the house. That's pretty cool. Well, if lumber's so high, think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of free material. Ooh. Grapes have to be in distress. Because if you think about it, if the vine feels like it's going to die, it's in distress, what does it do? It throws off more babies. Every grape has got a seed in it. So when you massively prune them, severely prune them, then they just throw off more grapes. Here's one of the ponds. Oh, dear. Here. Oh. Oh, that's that real estate deer, those remote control real estate deer that we hire. You can rent them by the hour or you can rent them by the day. I love this little cedar grove down there. Mm-hmm, it's pretty. I think Tom's here. Oh, yeah? He texted. Did he just text? But I couldn't read what he said. Well, we're just gonna go down and look at the creek real quick, and then we'll come back up and we'll see him. Your windshield is so we'll go dirty. Outside, then. 
Well, then you hollered that you can't have any audio. Make up your mind, boy. I know. There's a little creek here. They just throw a little rock, a few rocks in there. And you can get over real easy. There must have been an old house down here back in the day because there's, right here, is a little root cellar. Glad we took your trip online. <laughs> Let's go look at the Glens Creek. What are you afraid of? <laughs> Here's the creek, and I'm literally walking in like waist high weeds, but the grass grows good here in Kentucky with all the rain. And you can see the creek or river. Uh, usually goes all the way across. We haven't had rain in about two weeks, which is unusual, especially for the spring. But you can see over here how much wider it is. All this soil down here is all going to be river bottom. So Maury silt loam, I don't know, whatever. It's going to be the, the toppest quality soil in the whole state is going to be right here at these river bottoms. So if you need soil or if you wanted to put a house down here, your septic system, no problem. You want to plant garden, you want to do an orchard or something, you've got some of the richest soil going right here. Now I'll show you where we are here on the aerial. I'll put a little snippet in here and you can see you're quite a distance here from the house. Woo! stuff go, but you got to keep up with the mowing, or have the farmer do it, or throw some cattle out here, because otherwise you can have... Cattle, goats? Oh, yeah. Cattle, goats, sheep. A lot of people have sheep here, because the, the sheep numbers, if you think about the, the mama and baby units, you can raise eight sheep for less money, faster and for more profit than you can one cow. So you have eight times more sheep on, on the property. You throw a great Pyrenees out there and they'll take care of them sheep. And they're sweet dogs. Oh yeah. Just two wheel drive. The wet grass is click, clicking. You, you hear mm -hmm. the posier kicking in? There's more rocks. Oh, there's so many rocks you could just keep building. Yeah. The owner told us the stonemason he brought his oh, he brought his rock breaker. It must be some kind of a tool that just hammers them down to size or whatever. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of rocks. Yeah. You could build another building. Oh, yeah. You could probably build another house with just the rock scraps that are around the house up here. You know what I mean? I don't know if you can see the uh, the hunting cabin out there, but not a hunting cabin, but a fucking deer at. stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a lookout. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to do that. You wouldn't have to use it as a a deer lookout. You could use it as a clubhouse for the kids, for the grandkids. Gosh, wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. Put those electronics down, honey. We're going for a walk. <laughs> we're going to the tower and hang out, right? Yeah. How you doing?
Good morning to you. There's the real estate man. <laughs> Here today? I don't think so. I don't see any vehicles. My grandmother used to say, grass doesn't grow on her street. Means you're busy doing stuff. Glens Creek is that one. There's another little one here. All the way around is not showing. No, no, the little one. I've got a, a a blue line creek. That's probably not a blue line, but I'll I'll look it up. I'll see and I'll let you know. Um, you know, if you're going to do a venue here, would this not be a moment? Uh, walking down, taking photographs, walking down the yeah path. Yep. If you weren't going to do wedding venue. Wouldn't it be a moment for you and your grandkids or your kids to walk here or you mm -hmm. and your honey or whatever? Grab a glass of wine and go for a walk. Every time I grab a glass of wine. You don't go for a walk. I don't ever want to walk. You're not walking. You're no. not even standing upright. You're <laughs> sitting. People are going to think that I just drank a lot of wine. There we go. Now this is just a neighbor. So they have a right of way to come through here. It's just an older lady. She's got an, like an antique truck. Tom would call it an antique truck. I would call it like a truck that I used to own. <laughs> Tom would be like, man, that's a classic. No, damn it. That's a truck I used to own. <laughs> it was like, um, did you see it, Tom? It's, it's not. It's like a 70 Ford. 70 oh, wow, yeah. Ford. It was like 15 years before I was born. Oh. Ouch. God. Brought his right. underwear older than you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Call that a grandpa truck. That's right. I bought a truck like that one time for $75. I'll bet you I ran it for two years. Is that the one you picked me up in on our first date? No. That was backfiring? No. That was a 74 ship. By the way, Tom, thanks for uh, sending that remote-controlled realtor deer shooting across the road there earlier. And you got it. <laughs> it's the least he could do. What do you think for you, Brad? Well, where, do you, where do you get those on, like, remote control real estate agent deer com or what? I'm not going to tell you because then everybody will do it. <laughs> oh, Don't true. give away your secrets. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Cross country here. I think we went down that way. Let's try this. No, 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 no. What do you like, Batman? No, 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 Oh, the, the... The pollen? The pollen. Oh, there's another deer. Tom, we were talking about tractors and stuff like that. Obviously, if you didn't want a tractor, you could just have the farm guy have a tractor, and then they can help you with that. But if you did want to have a tractor, I'm going to do another video, a whole video, on the whole economics of how to get a tractor in your in your barn for not very much money down 
you know, make it reasonable. Kubota's really good at that. So we're gonna do a whole thing. Yeah, that guy that we just closed on the farm, he, uh, he's a tractor and he wanted to know how to get one. Yep. Well, I'm gonna do a whole video on, on how to get a, a new tractor, brand new Kubota tractor. For the price of this property, you don't have to use it as a winery. You don't have to use it as a business. It's got so much land and it's got the two houses. You're not paying a premium for a commercial property. Are those white blooms um, like berries? Wild roses. Oh, okay. I believe they're wild roses. Now they, they could be blackberries, but I believe they're wild roses being that tall. I think um, they look like roses. Well, now those are wild roses, but look at here. Those are blackberries or raspberries or something. Yeah, because they're different. It's a different flower, and it's that. And it's got the thorn. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have like the other thing. Yeah, it's different. The leaves are different. Yep. So you got both right here. <laughs> Drifting. <laughs> oh, look at that. Is that kingfisher? Or is that a. Oh, yeah. Zoom uh, in on that. It's not a, it's not a kingfisher. Hold on. looks like a, a heron of some sort. I was going to say a heron. That's what it looks like to me. But... Yep. This is called faith. <laughs> Driving blind. <laughs> Driving in four foot high grass. <laughs> <laughs> At 10 miles an hour. <laughs> Glad it's not my truck. <laughs> That's all I can say. Glad it's not my truck. It's only the diamond tricoat color for GM. It's their most expensive paint. After 200,000 miles. Do you even miles. have any more coat left? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tricoat. I'm down to one coat. Yeah. Maybe. Like you got a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was wondering. <laughs> you got a hooded sweatshirt? Oh, a hooded sweatshirt. Oh, you guys would know. Too old. Too old. Way too old. So, did you bring wine? You know, uh, for the wine tasting? It's 9 o'clock in the morning. So? We'll come back. It's juice. Stay tuned because we are going to have a wine tasting at the end of the video. You can come along with us and you can taste some wine again. It'd be like a virtual wine tasting. That would really suck. That would like be a, like, like a virtual Christmas. Yeah, that would just, you know. Yeah. yeah. That would you could watch other people have fun.
Hello, Mr. Buffalo. What was his name? Buff. Bill. I have to actually watch the camera. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> nice ground. <laughs> look at that, look at the ground, see? Look at the ground. I've never gone over here on this side. We're going to come right back to here to this spot. Let's see. Yeah, I'm put it on wide angle because you hear the sun. There you go. He needs to one. Actually, the hair of the dog, right? <laughs> you need a new cameraman. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It, um, uh, hour and a half. Of it doesn't tell you it's on slow mo. Like it <laughs> the video going, you have no idea. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to see your comments below. Like and subscribe because we've got a number of properties coming on the market that you're going to want to see. Don't forget to go to our website, bluegrassteam.com slash blog for the latest properties we have.